Trade deadline is right around the corner, so let's talk with Jeff Carr from Locked On Reds to see if the A's are a good partner. You are Locked On A's, your daily Oakland A's podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, A's fans, and welcome to Locked On A's, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. This is the daily podcast we talk about your Oakland A's all year long. I am yours, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully. I've been a baseball podcast for well over a decade now. This is my sixth full season here at the Locked On Podcast Network. Uh, follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter, or whatever it's called now, and on Instagram. I am your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on instagram and hey today's episode is brought to you by our good friends at FanDuel. make every moment more as playoffs wind down the sports stop sport like we want them to but this summer FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily that's right there's something for everybody every day all summer long is at fanduel.com slash locked on to get started uh let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be uh going over today um, we're, we're having Jeff Carr on. I was actually a guest on Locked on Reds, and we went way over our segment. And I said, hey, can I have all the footage that we did? I was supposed to do one segment. He whittled it down. and said, we talked about a lot of stuff here. And so I thought it would be a fun uh, episode to put it on for you A's fans, especially on a day like today where there was no game. Uh, mercifully, the A's didn't lose any games today. So... That worked out fine for them. And so what you're going to see is the complete interview with the, my complete appearance, unedited, from Locked on Reds. And uh, enjoy as we talk a little bit about the fact that the Reds and the A's could make interesting trade partners as we approach the trade deadline. So uh, with no further ado, here is a little bit of my conversation with Jeff Carr of Locked on Reds. Well, it's trade season, or at least it should be. I, I think teams wait far too long to get their trades in, unless, of course, you're the Padres and the Marlins who already made their trade earlier this season. But the Cincinnati Reds should be buyers. I've been saying that all episode. And there's a, there's a caveat to that, of course, but I think that the A's have a guy that fits that caveat. If you've listened, if you're an everydayer of the Lockdown Reds podcast, and if you're a Lockdown A's fan, just checking in on this, this crossover uh, segment here that I have with Sully over who is filling in for Lockdown A's doing a fine job doing that as well. Um, Brent Rucker has been my guy. And if, if you ask me to pick a guy that the Reds could possibly go get, that's the guy that I want them to go for but the big question is sully with the situation with the a's they're gonna play in sacramento for a few years and then they're gonna move to vegas and maybe. there's all of this turmoil maybe. right maybe to everything are they in the position right now that it's everything must go or are there some <clears throat> players that are nailed now no there's nothing nailed down um i i think that brooker is guaranteed to be traded he's okay. gonna be uh, he's going to be 30 uh, just after the World Series is over um, as they're having their parade in Oakland celebrating the championship. Um, you know, the, I mean, he is, he is, he has several years of control. Mm -hmm. He is not going to be a free agent until 2028, but he is, uh, they select him off the waivers. They got him for nothing. And he is at peak value right now. He is right. he has a decent if it wasn't for Miller, um, he would probably be going to his second straight all-star game because mm -hmm. the A's need a representative. And um, while he's not putting up numbers that are gonna make anyone forget Jose Canseco, um, he's having a fine year. He's he's gonna be 30 soon, so he's not part of anyone's long-term plans. And if you need a quality right-handed power hitter um he could fit the bill perfectly now the a the a's are in a obviously no team has ever been in this situation the right. closest we've ever seen is when the expos were owned by major league baseball 
at the beginning of the 2000s. And even though they contended for the wild card, they couldn't bring players up and they couldn't make a trade because it was this bizarre conflict of interest. So they could work out a deal with the Orioles to move the team from Montreal to Washington. Um, the A's don't really have a home. Uh, supposedly, they're going to be playing in Oakland and uh, um, in Las Vegas in a few years. The only thing standing in the way of that is uh, a feasible stadium design, uh, a place to build the stadium lockdown, <laughs> the finances behind the stadium, and any enthusiasm by local businesses and the city of Las Vegas. Now, that's nitpicking. That's those are those are details. Right. Um, and then they were going to be sharing a ballpark with the Sacramento Rivercats. The Rivercats aren't even going to move. They're going to still play <laughs> there. Like, I, I put out a proposal, Reds fans, A's fans, you've heard me say this, to say if, there, if baseball actually had a commissioner, they would say we can't have the A's say, oh, wait a minute, we're sharing a dressing room with the Rivercats. For the time that they're in Sacramento, because remember they folded a couple of teams from the California League, Mm-hmm. move the Giants AAA team from Sacramento to Fresno, which used to be their AAA team. Mm-hmm. The team that's in Fresno is currently a single-A team for the Colorado Rockies. Move the Colorado Rockies single-A affiliate to Lancaster, where they have a stadium that was built relatively recently and should probably fit the standards of single-A ball. Right. Don't tell the A's that because they may say, hey, maybe we'll move to Lancaster. <laughs> um, and at least while the A's are in Sacramento, you don't have the 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 disgrace of seeing them play with a minor league team in a minor league ballpark, which brings right. us a little bit to this actually ties into the trade deadline. And you say, well, what are the A's trying to do here? Well, yeah, they what they need is a farm. They have one player in the top 100 of MLB prospects. When you are possibly the uh, the second worst team in baseball Mm. and you have the lowest payroll in baseball, you better have an okay farm system. Let's look at the top 100 players in minor league baseball. One of them is under control by the A's and he's in single A. (laughs) <laughs> okay oh and the a's are making noise to the people in las vegas that we're gonna field a competitive team by the time we get to vegas mm. well you're not doing it by spending money because even if they say oh we're gonna open up the or i'm gonna spend all this gap money that the fishers have um what free agent is gonna say hey i can't wait to share a locker with the Sacramento River Cats. Right. What free agent in their right mind would sign with the Sacramento A's? And at None. that point, which uh which uh you know uh possible drawing, you know, uh hybrid drawing of the Las Vegas Stadium are you gonna show a, pr- a, I, I, a prospective I, free agent and be like, You're gonna play here or something like this. I I, I was doing I teach special ed and my kids were doing watercolors today, which were more detailed than the plans that were shown of the Las Vegas stadium. I just, I'm just right. going to put that out there. So what the A's need more than anything is quantity. They mm-hmm. need, if they're going to trade Rooker, they need three bodies. Okay. They need to get three. Now, ideally, they would get one top prospect. But you're not going to fork over your top prospect for Brent Rooker. So give right. me three good ones. Okay. Any person they trade, they need to they need quantity almost as much as quality at this point. They need to just flood their system, which by the way, is what the Cubs did and is what the Astros did when they traded everything that wasn't nailed down at the beginning of the 2010s to eventually right. build up a trash can filled World Series champion in Houston, sorry, H-Town, and a uh, the championship that Chicago won over Cleveland, which they right. kept together for a minute and a half. But they they traded away everything, everything, everything. We don't care if Jeff Smarsta went to Notre Dame and will be a fan favorite. We need everyone. Everyone's got to go. And the A's know, first of all, their drafts they've been having have been grotesque. I mean, they have swung and missed on so many draft picks 
over the last 10 years, which is one reason why how you got here. And so you need to just their their strategy is in and sadly trade away Mason Miller, who's they're gonna be their all-star, they're gonna have to trade him because mm-hmm. this is like I have a trailer that's half burnt down, but I have a Maserati in front of it. Like a <laughs> A closer of his caliber is such a wasted luxury on a team that's going to win 60 games. Right. You know, I mean, holy cow. I mean, like, I hear some people say, maybe they shouldn't use him if it's not a safe situation. Use him whatever you have the lead. You're not, you don't have many leads. He's not going to pitch then, yeah. <laughs> but you also know how, how relievers flame out, and he has had some injury issues. By the time the A's are remotely good, whether they're playing in Sacramento or in Las Vegas, he's not going to be a factor. So you might as well get three players back from him. You got to, if they trade Rooker to Cincinnati, or if they trade J.P. Sears, who again is at the second coming mm-hmm. of Grover Cleveland Alexander, but he's a major league pitcher. Miguel Andujar, I have a better chance of finishing the season with the A's than Miguel Andujar, which they got <laughs> for a a Milky Way bar is what they got for him, you know, to acquire him. And he's playing okay. So a team says, we could use an additional bat for depth. Whatever they do, there has to be two or three names coming back because their farm system is garbage. It's absolute garbage. Max Muncy, no, not that Max Muncy, the other Max Muncy, is one of the only few bright spots they currently have in their Mm -hmm. farm system right now. So uh, that's above single A. And I'm skeptical of any prospect below double A. You have to make that leap from single A to double A. Lots of great draft picks never make that leap. So I don't even pay attention to a prospect until they've at least hit double A. I love sports. I love it so much. I don't ever want them to stop. But as the playoffs wound down, we got fewer games. And the sports aren't sportsing like I want them to. But FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. All I have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime I'm in the mood. And this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everybody, every day, all day long. So head over to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn and start making the most of your summer. FanDuel is the official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Hey, what's your go-to hub for all your sports news? Make the switch to Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 streaming channel program for you to bring you the biggest sports stories out there. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and takes, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channel app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every, every day. Easy for you to say. Hey, let's get back to my conversation with Jeff Carr from Locked On Reds. So let's look at this. You're, you're the way that you're talking here. I got a few ideas. I have and a ray from heaven. A ray from heaven is coming up from it. Going that? quantity. It's going to be a little bit interesting because there are a number of guys that I would pick that are in high A, not necessarily double A. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're not talking, you know, ready in a year or two. It'd probably take two or three years, so they'd be perfect for Vegas. Right. Uh, the first guy is Cam Collier, which, according to MLB Pipeline, is the number three prospect in the Reds organization. Top 100 guy, third baseman, um, first round pick by the Reds out of uh, JUCO. He actually went to JUCO. He was he graduated high school, I think, when he was 17. He was playing JUCO ball when he was 18 um and and or 17 and 18 and then he was drafted by the reds can i just pause and, you for one second because yeah. my mom's my mom's listening to this yeah. junior college junior, yes. junior juco is junior college okay keep yes so you're college. you're talking about cam collier at this point yes talking about cam collier that's who i'm starting the deal with and then i would also come down so let's let's look okay um, i have him up here as a he is a 19 year old a uh, left-handed hitting third baseman. Um, he's, uh, uh, you know, he's a middle of the, he looks like he could be a potential middle of the order hitter for the mm-hmm. team. Uh, has good power numbers. Uh, he strikes out a lot. Um, yes. But who, does, who doesn't who does these days? 
um, <laughs> not hit, not having a great overall in terms of average season, but that's, you know, sometimes you have to take that with a grain of salt because uh, they may be just trying to, t- you know, teaching their prospects to hit line drives instead of b- building up their batting averages. Right. He's He's got the power. It's, yeah, it's going to be the consistency as far as at bat to at bat. What's that look like? Uh, the next guy that I would add to this deal would be Julian Aguiar. He did make it to AAA this season. He is 23 years old. Mm-hmm. He is a right-handed, right-handed pitcher. Right-handed pitcher. He was the Reds pitcher of the year in their minor league organization last season. Uh, a really good uh, 2023 overall. He's been moving through the system. Could be ready probably in a year or two, maybe even just one year. Uh, to be ready for so then you know you pitch a couple of years in sacramento and then you're ready to go in your prime whenever the team hits vegas um pretty solid pitcher there as well and then the the third guy for the quantity i would add in kind of go down he is he's a relief pitcher um and he's a guy that could be up with the reds here soon but i think w- that's kind of what makes him a little bit tantalizing a deal i would give up zach maxwell he's right. a right-handed pitcher 23 Pitch years Lu- old pitches for louisville right now has pitches a very good very, very good strikeout to walk ratio 47 strikeouts to uh, stri- uh strikeouts for innings pitch ratio 47 strikeouts to 26 in the third innings pitched and they're batting only 191 off of them and I would uh, probably be able to fit into a game used uh, uniform from him, 6'6, 275. Big mm. guy, big, big guy. Um, so those are the three guys I'm looking at Cam Collier, Julian Aguiar, and Zach Maxwell uh, for, for possibilities in this trade negotiation from Brent Rooker. Maybe even think about throwing in Miguel Andujar if we add in another prospect somewhere in the middle teens, something like that. I, I'd be all for that deal. I mean, mm-hmm. one of the biggest problems the A's have had, other than and that their terrible farm system uh, and the, their whiffing on their draft picks, one of the problems that's made is that, yes, they're not a very good team. And it's also, who who's the foundation of this team? Mm-hmm. Who's the player that you, I mean, Rooker is the centerpiece of the lineup. That's a problem. He's a complementary piece. And sometimes you say, like, okay, this team stinks, but they have this great prospect coming up. They have this great person who's coming up who's going to be the foundation of the lineup. They don't have that. Right. You know, it's like. And it kind of felt like Estuary Ruiz might be that guy, but, but he, he hasn't fell hit. right. First of all, he, yeah, he also fell right into the doghouse with the organization. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's, he was a lot of fun last year, but it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, when they, they start, they just put him you know, up and down the, the, the farm and they sent him down the farm a couple of times and he's had a difficult time readjusting. Yeah. That's, that's gotta be tough though. Looking at that. And kind of like you said, like that's something that the A's are going to be looking for is more down the road, not necessarily somebody that's ready to go next year, but Aguiar can kind of be that gap pitcher there. Who's yeah. going to be a solid starting pitcher. And then, you know, Zach Maxwell in the bullpen can replace Mason Miller in a year or so. And, yeah. and then your your key guy being Cam Collier, that's your guy to kind yeah. of look at. There's some folks, they're not necessarily going this crazy about it, but there's some folks that are just like, he could be a L.A. De La Cruz level prospect, not necessarily as good as him, but on that same level in a few years if he develops accordingly. If the A's can trade away four or five veterans and get two or three times that many players into their farm system, that would be a successful trade deadline. Um, and they and they have to it even if it's even if it's padding a trade, they have to get two players back mm-hmm. because they're just there's nobody the cupboard is bare. You know, and you don't always know what the combination of players. Maybe that player isn't necessarily going to make it to the majors, but maybe having that player play with a certain player or having a lot of talent on the team or having good defense behind a pitcher will give them, give them confidence. I don't know, but this is like, this team is a mess. And, you know, Rooker could be a good fit for Cincy. So if he is a good Indeed, fit for I'll Cincy. Feel help. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I mean, how could it be worse for the A's? They don't even know where they're playing, you know? 
I mean, it's that scene from Life of Brian where they're going to stone the guy to death. And he said, don't make it worse for yourself. I said, how can it make it worse? How can it be worse? How can it be worse? You know, I mean, so like, oh, you hate to put the, you'd hate that the A's would make a trade that put them in a bad place or maybe lose their fans. You know, I mean, at this point, you, I mean, you're not even, you're not even building this for Oakland or Sacramento at this point, even though I've said on the show many, many times, I think it's more likely that the A's are going to stay in Sacramento than go to Vegas. I think Vegas is going to fall apart. I'm not saying Major League Baseball is not going to come to Vegas. Right. But I do think that at one point, the good folks of Vegas are going to look, we don't want to work with these people. You know, I know we want want baseball in the worst way, but does it have to be the worst way? And um, this owner, I mean, you're starting to already see there in the honeymoon period that there's cracks in the armor. That you're like, oh, we're we're knocking down the the Tropicana. And by what is it with baseball associated Tropicana with doomed franchises? I don't understand. <laughs> um, yeah, the Rays have been all right. Even but though, uh, yeah, yeah, no, but yeah, but they're going to build a stadium right next to it. It's like, oh, the problem is the location. Well, let's build one right next to it. That seems smart. <laughs> by the way, I've said this. Lockdown A's fans have heard me say this, but Lockdown Reds fans, one of the most popular teams. In the NHL, in terms of attendance, are the Tampa Bay Lightning. They draw very, very well, thank you very much, because they play in downtown Tampa, where they have a vibrant downtown, a lot of foot traffic, and oh yeah, it's cool. It's a a hot summer, you know, it's a hot... And they're a pretty good team. And they're a terrific (laughs) team, but they draw very well, thank you very much. The Rays have been a terrific team, and they haven't drawn very well. Right. Those same fans love the Rays. They get very good TV ratings. Hmm, what's the issue? Well, they built the stadium in the 80s on the on the peninsula before they knew where to put a stadium. Build a stadium downtown. I, I, do I think they'll draw as well as the Dodgers? No, but they'll get 25, 30,000 a game there. Right. But if you keep, build it right next to it, we're going to have the same conversation in 30 years. In 30 years, the conversation will be, what are we going to do about the Rays playing in St. Petersburg? And, well, it looks like the A's are on the move again. <laughs> That'll be on Locked On and it'll be in 2054. Prize Picks. It is America's number one daily fantasy sports app. With over 5 million active members, Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. And unlike other apps on prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community. Now you can win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. You can turn $10 into $1,000. And if you're looking for promotions, prize picks has you covered every week. From lowering select player stats projections on Tuesday to help your lineup hit or getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Friday. And PrizePick is available in more than 30 states across the country, including Texas, Georgia, and here in California. Download the PrizePix app and use the code LOCKEDONMLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code LOCKEDONMLB on PrizePix for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more. Pick less. It's that easy on prize picks. You know, we here at Locked On A's pride ourselves on getting you the latest news for the A's. Whether it's the offseason, the draft, spring training, or the move to Sacramento, it's year-round. You know what else is year-round? Collection seasons. Just because the tax season is over doesn't mean the IRS will stop coming after your unfiled taxes. The IRS can garnish your wages, levy your bank accounts, even seize your property. Don't let the IRS target you. Let the licensed professionals and tax expert at Tax Network USA go to bat for you. A lot of times I've worked for companies. Some have been media companies. Some have been clients. They pay with a personal check, cash, or they give you a check, which is a 1099. They don't take the taxes out of it. If you don't have people like the good folks at Tax Network USA working for you, like I did on those instances, I would get absolutely clobbered on April 15th. And we can't have that, can we? With over 14 years of experience and an A-plus rating by the Better Business Bureau, Tax Network USA 
has saved clients over a billion dollars in tax debt. Whether you owe taxes, have complicated matters that require tax planning, or finally hit that parlay this season and need help correctly filing, you need to call 1-800-549-1000 or visit tnusa.com slash lockdown. Be sure to mention Lockdown A as a checkout. You'll receive $250 discount of their services. Let Tax Network USA go to bat for you. This is a reminder that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV and the Free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Day is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts on Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today, now available on the Free Fire TV channel app. Well, hey, I wanted to thank uh, Jeff Carr for letting me jump on board and... Um, basically giving me a free episode. The A's resume the season on uh, Tuesday evening. They're back in town. Let's get, a, let's get a decent crowd out there. They're playing the Angels. Now, we all know what happened the last time the A's played the Angels. It was, uh, it was ugly. Spence is pitching against Soriano. Let's get some of those games back. Let's make the Angels' life a little bit tougher, shall we? And we're going to see... Uh, and, you know, there's going to be some great giveaways and everything like that going. But but Spence is pitching. I'm going to take a good long look to see how the A's go against the Angels because, you know, frankly, it, it, it wasn't good. It was not good the last time they matched up. Langoliers played well, but not much after that. Hey, uh, I'm going to answer a couple of quick uh, uh, comments that we got on the YouTube page. By the way, if you enjoy the show, um, make sure to subscribe on YouTube and tell your friends, you know, that there's a place where we're talking about the A's. Um, uh, it's Steve says, Sully, when the A's moved to Sacramento, will you still host Locked on A's? That, you know what? I actually don't know the answer to that question. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I took over Locked on A's this year. Uh, we've had some terrific hosts for Locked on A's in the past. But for whatever reason, this was uh, an available show, and it was wide open when the announcement for Las Vegas came about, and I called up the good people at Locked On. I was already hosting Locked On MLB five days a week. I said, we have to have Locked On A's open. I said, we don't have a show. I said, give it to me. I'll host it. I don't care. Um, I don't know if I'm going to host it again next year. You know, doing two shows a day is a lot. I also have a full-time job. Uh, and I'm also a father, and I also occasionally would like to sleep. Uh, if you know someone who would be a good host, let us know, and maybe we'll have him come in, maybe be a guest hosting with me from time to time. I'm definitely going to go through the end of the year. I'm having too much fun. Whether whether we continue going at the Sacramento A's, uh, we'll see. We'll see. One thing I will not do is be the host of Locked On Sacramento River Cats because that's just uh, that's just crazy. And uh, what else? Oh, um, and uh, Mark uh, Sujian said, hang in there, Sully. Look at look at it this way. How could things get worse? Uh, yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, they could get worse, but let's not let's not hope for that to happen. Hey, uh, thanks for listening to the show. Thanks, Jeff Carr. By the way, I know my uh, my camera is I I'm using a different camera than I normally do because of a laptop issue. Trust me, I'll be back using my old camera tomorrow. Uh, so I, I know I look a little murkier than I normally do. Uh, so follow us at Locked On A's on Twitter or whatever the hell it's called now on Instagram. I'm your pal Sully. I'm at Sully Baseball on Twitter, Sully Baseball Podcast on Instagram. Talking about the Reds and A's as potential partners in the trade market with the great Jeff Carr of Locked On Reds. This has been Locked On A's. I am your host, Paul Francis Sullivan. Please call me Sully.